In this lesson, you will create a spreadsheet that showcases a roster of NBA Hall of Fame players, the year they were enshrined, their date of birth, and a highlight from their biography. The first thing that we are going to do is create a new spreadsheet and we're just going to leave the default font and size of the spreadsheet software as it is. So I'm just going to come down here in my taskbar and click my Excel icon. I'm just going to go ahead and move this into split screen so I can see my instructions over here. I'm going to open this blank workbook. Okay, so now it says to format the width of column A to 20 and column D to 35. So in order to select all of column A here, I'm going to click the actual letter right here and it's going to select column A all the way down. Now to make a setting, I'm going to right click on my mouse and I'm going to go to column width. And again, it wanted us to change this to 20. I'm going to click enter or OK. I'm going to do the same thing with column D. So I'm going to come up here and click the actual letter. Right click on my mouse. Column width and this one is going to be 35. OK. OK, format the height of the row 1 to 50. So I'm going to do the same thing, but now we're going to be working with rows. So I'm going to select the number one here, and this will select the entire row for me. Okay, so now I'm just gonna right click and go row height, and it wants us to make it 50. Okay, now it wants us to format column D to wrap the text within the cell. So that means that in column D, what we want to happen is when there's too much text in one cell and it overflows, it jumps down to the next line or the next cell, or it makes the cell bigger essentially, instead of falling into the next cell next to it or cutting off the text completely. So I'm going to select column D. I'm going to make sure I'm in my home tab right here and I'm in my alignment group here, and I'm just going to click this A, B with the curly arrow next to it. If you hold your mouse over it for a second, it will say wrap text, and that's what we want to do. Okay, once you click it, you won't see anything happen because we don't have any text in the spreadsheet, but you can see that the icon is now shaded a dark gray around it, so we know it's selected. And this will set to all of column D because we had all of column D selected up here. Okay, now it says to type the data as shown in figure 7.2a. So I'm going to scroll down and this is our figure. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm typing all of my content in the exact same cell as this figure shows. So here I'm in A1. I can see the cell address here. If I'm not 100% sure, A1 is pretty obvious. I can see the A and 1 right next to it. I'm going to make sure A and 1 is right here on our figure. And we're good to start typing. So NBA. Whoa. Hall of Fame. Okay. Now it looks like row 2 is left blank. So we're going to use our down key to go skip over row two, and now we're in row three. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just start typing everything on this row. So I'm gonna go player. I can use my right arrow or my tab key to move along row three. Year enshrined. Date of birth. Okay, so if you notice these words in columns B and C or cell B3 and C3 are overflowing. That is because the wrap text is not um, set on here. So if we did wrap text in B, it would look like this. We don't want to do that because it took this D off right here. It just looks kind of weird. So we're going to take that off by clicking the icon again. Okay. In order to move this column, together, I'm just going to select B here 
and then I'm gonna move my mouse right in between B and C and I can just drag it. Okay, and I'm just gonna drag it to be where it fits the, the text fits the cell perfectly. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with C. So I'm gonna select the whole column up here by clicking the letter. I'm gonna move my mouse in between C and D and just drag this, okay? And so now we can see all of our text in the cell. It's not cut off or it's not going into the next cell. Okay, now we're in column D, cell D3, and we're gonna go biography notes, okay? Now I'm going to use my arrow keys to go under row three, and now we're in row four. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start typing in all of this information exactly as I see it. Okay. Okay, so Excel automatically registered when I typed 4 slash 1647 as a date. I know this because even though I typed 47, it changed it to 1947 because that is the setting for dates that I have in Excel. Okay, it also says date here when this cell is selected. So I have C4 selected here where the date I typed in is. And under number, it tells us what kind of number it is right here and it says date. Okay, this is our number format. If we don't wanna have it set as date, we can just go number, but I'm just going to leave it. I don't mind it. Okay. Okay, so now all of my information is typed in. I can scroll and see it all. One thing I did notice is that whenever I typed in the date for Paul, it went in as 2028 instead of 1928. Um, so really quick, I'm gonna show you guys how to change our date settings. So we're just gonna highlight all the cells that have dates. So that is cell C3 all the way through C7, okay, or C4 all the way through C7. And we're going to click the drop down arrow in the number group. We're in the home tab. So, home tab, number group. We're going to go where it says date and click this little drop down. Okay. Now, here you have some quick options for your date or for your numbers and how you want to format them. We can go into a deeper way of formatting if we click this more no number formats box at the very bottom. I'm going to click date because that's what our numbers are. And I'm just gonna go ahead and choose this one that has the two year numbers instead of four that it was really supposed to look like. And I'm gonna click okay. And if you see, this is all changed and it's in the correct format. Now, this is probably still registered as 2028. To us, it just looks like 28 or 1928. Um, so you guys, if you actually wanted it to be correct, go in and change that 20 to a 19. Okay, so now it wants us to resize columns B and C so that all the data is displayed. We've already done this um, whenever we moved column B with the little arrow up here. Okay, now it wants us to save the spreadsheet as NBA Hall. So I'm going to save just like I know how to do in my Excel folder and my H drive and we're naming it NBA Hall. Okay. Center the text in cell A1 vertically, so I'm going to locate cell A1. Okay, and now to center it vertically, that doesn't mean, um, if we're centering it horizontally, that means that it'll be centered like this, but we aren't centering it that way, we're centering it vertical. So we're gonna go back into this left alignment right here. Now this is our vertical tool right here. So we're in the home tab and alignment. Okay, and this is how we center or make it go in the bottom line or the top line vertically. So this middle one right here is a middle align. 
So if you see my text in A1 is now in the middle of the cell. If we go to the top, it'll be at the top line, the bottom, it'll be at the bottom line. Okay, so we're just gonna choose this middle one. Okay, and then it just says to proofread our work for accuracy and then set the print area of the spreadsheet to include cells A1 through D10. So the way that I find easiest to print a certain amount of cells, like let's say we have all this filled out, but we only want these cells printed, I can come up here into A1, I'm gonna drag over to column D, come all the way down, and I'll highlight all the way until row 10. Okay, now again, to do that, I just held my mouse key down and drug all the way from A1 down to D10. Okay, then we're gonna go File, Print. Okay, right here in Settings, it says Print Active Sheets. That means it would print anything that I have um, open on my Excel. Okay, now to print only the selected cells that I have, I'm gonna go Print Selection. It doesn't really look different because our other cells don't have any information in it, but this is setting our printer to only print the cells that I have highlighted on my spreadsheet beforehand. Okay, we're not actually going to print anything, so we can just X out of this. Okay, once this looks good and you're good with your spreadsheet, you can make sure you save it and then turn it into Google Classroom.